Fujifilm cameras are known for rendering great colors and because you want the quality of your Fujifilm camera to show through when you share your videos, I'll be sharing with you my F-Log 2 Rec 709 conversion workflow. What is your current workflow? Let us know down in the comments below. Quickly, you want to make sure you are properly exposing your footage and that you are not clipping your highlights and shadows. The Fujifilm X-H1 does not have zebras, but it does have the clipping feature that I use at all times that allows me to make sure I am not clipping the highlights. The shadows on the other hand sometimes suffer, so I make sure I overexpose by at least 0.6 stops. Make sure you white balance your camera based on how you want your final image to look. This is a great starting point for making sure your conversions don't look a mess once you apply your conversion LUT or manually convert your footage. Applying a LUT is pretty simple. Just follow the steps of using a conversion LUT in your software of choice or you can manually convert your log footage which takes a little more time but it is just as simple as using a conversion LUT. You are adding contrast, saturation and white balancing your footage to prep your image for color grading which we'll be covering in a color correction video which I'm currently working on but the reason I want to share this with you is because ever since I got my hands on the Fujifilm X-H1 basically a relic of a camera when it comes to newer cameras on the market I've made it a goal of mine to highlight the fact that this is a great camera for you me photographers videographers content creators and filmmakers especially for those of us who shop on a budget recently i've noticed more videos popping up from some awesome creators who are also showing the true value of the fujifilm xh1 definitely go check them out because when it comes to creating the camera is a small portion of the creation process although i am using the fujifilm xh1 this workflow works for her. any camera that uses the f-log one profile with that out of the way let's dive deeper into this F-Log2 Rec 709 conversion workflow. Let's circle back to exposure because exposure is everything. There are various ways to expose your footage, but all you need to know for now is that you do not want to clip your highlights and shadows. You can clip your footage by overexposing or underexposing, but you can overexpose and underexpose your footage and not clip your shadows and highlights. I overexpose my footage because I like to preserve my highlights, but right now I'm shifting on to preserving my shadows by decreasing the exposure and shooting for middle exposure. So my exposure range for the Fujifilm X-H1, depending on whether I am shooting more for highlights or shadows is plus 0.6 to plus 1.6 stops overexposed. This might change the more I experiment. I'm doing this so I can better understand exposing for skin tones. That's a whole other rabbit hole and I'll be talking about that in another video. But play around with the exposure. It is really the only way you will know how you like to expose your footage. When it comes to white balancing, there are also various ways to white balance your footage and camera. You also wanna white balance once you have your footage after you apply your conversion LUT, but we will talk about that a little later in this video. We will call this white balancing the first wave white balancing. Because we're shooting an F-Log, there's a lack of contrast and saturation in the footage. If your camera has the option to see your X-709 image as you are shooting, use it. I don't like to use it in the Fujifilm X-H1, so I tend to use the external monitor or eye it and hope it comes out pretty good. But you want to make sure you are white balancing your image as close as to where you want it in camera. So for one, there is less to do on the back end. And secondly, because it can take away from the room you have for color grading your image. What I mean by that is that you only have so much information to work with in your video file and you want to leave some room for color grading. I am getting ahead of myself. We will be adding the contrast and saturation later on in this video. Your white balancing options range between having minor control to having full control over your white balance. There are various white balancing options within your camera and I rank them into groups minor control and full control. I can deep dive into all of these in another video, but for this one, I'm using a minor control option and I'm tweaking the color tone to get the look I want based on the filter I'm using in front of the lens. Side note, when you do use a ND filter or a mist filter or something like that, it can cause a color cast over the image and you also want to compensate for that or figure out how to correct it afterwards. All right, so now we have our footage. We have everything white balanced. We we are ready to start editing. And this is where the second half of the conversion workflow comes in, and that is adding contrast and saturation back into your footage. Mm -hmm. 
There are two ways to do this, and that is manually by using the contrast, midtone, highlights, and gamma control tool in your editing software, or using a conversion LUT. First, let's talk about the manual conversion workflow. When I first started out and I was doing my research on how to convert log footage to Rec. 709, I found that there was a lot of information saying that manually converting your footage would take forever, especially if you were working on a bigger project and you were converting one clip at a time, which is definitely true. It does take a ton of time, but I found a workaround and had us copy and paste and then tweak the settings of each clip. Whenever I shoot a clip, I always say out loud how many stops of overexposure or underexposure I am. So when I'm going through and organizing the clips in the end, I know which exposure I shot each clip. And when I convert the hero clip, I can use that conversion on all of the other clips, which were exposed similarly. Then I tweak them and make sure the exposure of all the clips I'm working with match. And once you do this, if your editing software allows, you can create a LUT and use it going forward, which is the second way of converting your log footage to Rec. 709. If your software doesn't allow for you to export a LUT, you can definitely download DaVinci Resolve, the free version, and it allows you to export a LUT. But let's get into the second way to convert your log footage, and that's using a conversion LUT. For this, I'll be using one of the free LUTs you can find down in the description, but depending on the software you're using, the steps to applying your LUT may be different, but the workflow is all the same. The major part of this step is just applying your conversion LUT, and that is pretty much it. It takes a ton out of the previous steps in the beginning. You can definitely find on how to use a LUT within a certain software that you were using somewhere here on YouTube. But the major part of this step is just applying your conversion LUT. And that is pretty much it. It takes a ton out of the previous steps in the beginning. But don't forget that once you apply the conversion LUT, you still have to white balance. Remember to white balance afterwards. And that's the second wave of white balancing. Make sure after you apply the LUT, you go back and you white balance. And that will give you a even better starting point for when you start the color grading process. Now, there is something I do want to highlight that is very important. Most conversion LUTs were created with a certain exposure value in mind, and the contrast curve of that conversion LUT doesn't really care how you expose your footage, so you will find that after you apply the conversion LUT that you still have to tweak and adjust your image a bit, and then white balance your footage again. You want to white balance again because the creator of that LUT may have added a color tint to the conversion LUT to compensate for the color cast that is created within the camera based on how the camera manufacturer fine-tuned how the sensor captures and render light and color or something along those lines. If you created it yourself, then you only have to worry about how you fine-tuned your LUT. Now you're ready for color grading, which I'll be covering in the video at the bottom. And if it's not there, then enjoy the one at the top for now after liking, subscribing while staying awesome. Stay awesome.